Netflix reported a blowout quarter this week. Stock blasted to a new high above 200. A few months ago on the bottom line, when the stock was about 150, we did a segment saying, how high can it go? Because it didn't seem like it could go any higher. I think our projection at that point was 200. So here we are. So what does it mean going forward? The big thesis on Netflix is that Netflix is a modern TV network. It's just simply better than legacy TV networks. You can watch what you want to watch, wherever you want to watch it, whenever you want to watch it. You can sign up your entire family, at least our household. There are often two or three Netflix programs being consumed at one time. It's very different from television. And this is happening now all over the world, and a lot of Netflix's growth is coming from international, where they made big investments many years ago. From a high level, you can certainly say this is another great example of a company avoiding near-term profitability, investing a huge amount in long-term growth, and getting amply rewarded for it. And personally, I would say this is a suggestion to the rest of CEOs and companies out there that you can do that, that you don't have to maximize profit every quarter. But back to Netflix, how high can it go? At 200, the company has about an $85 billion market capitalization. It now dwarfs Viacom, CBS, it's bigger than Time Warner. It's now about a half of a Disney, which is the sole remaining massive legacy content player, smaller than Comcast, tiny fraction of Facebook and Google. But how high can it go? I think the way to think about it is at some point, Netflix will trade on a multiple of EBITDA, just like every other media company. To support a $100 billion market capitalization, it would have to have, say, seven to eight billion of EBITDA. It would trade at something like 15 to 20 times that. So where are they now? Well, they now have about eight billion of revenue. So you are looking way into the future to get to seven to eight billion of EBITDA. On the other hand, you ask, what is it that's going to stop Netflix now that they are growing so fast internationally, now that they can invest more in content every year than Every other network, including ESPN, their projection for net next year is $8 billion. There's no reason that as they grow, that annual content investment can't get even bigger. So there's really no limit on it there. The limit is how many people around the world can afford to pay for Netflix every month. Certainly, there's a long way to go from now. But as the numbers get bigger, harder to justify, and at some point, the stock will trade at a reasonable EBITDA multiple, just like every other company. Sarah, what do you think? Well, I, I think that you point out a good thing about the content. It does seem to be all about that. And for me, they just increased their pricing by a dollar, two dollars at the higher level, because I, like you, usually have more than two screens with Netflix at my house at a time. And I think that there's a lot more room that they could go, at least at pricing in, in the U.S., which isn't a lot of their subscribers. But there is upside. Right now, a lot of us are paying for all of the we're paying for cable and Netflix, and Netflix is a bargain for us at this price. That's right. There's definitely pricing power, I think, up from where they are now in the U.S. There certainly is the ability to offer family plans. We were talking earlier, and you said, you know, on the merchandise side, Netflix still can't compete with Disney. They don't have all the kids' stuff. And I would say, they don't have all the kids' stuff yet. Yeah, I watch Troll Hunters. There is no Hunters. reason for them not to go into the kids' stuff at yeah. some point. Yeah, I think and the merchandising thing is just fun because they they sort of announced it during their earnings call by putting on the Stranger Things Christmas light sweaters, which are adorable, and I would definitely get one. Um, but Adorable I, is a charitable word that I have not heard until now about those sweaters. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like them. I think that they're funny. Um, but with um, Disney, I think it's at some $56 billion in merchandising dollars. Um, I don't see that for Netflix. Or, you know, that seems like a, a stretch. Um, and Nickelodeon's a lot further below that. And a lot of that is kid stuff. But this dynamic, the ability to continue to spend more and more every year on content and thereby have a good library for potentially every human being on the planet, is a powerful model. And so it's very hard to sit here and say, okay, they can never get to a level that would justify this. Yeah, I mean, for merchandising, but I think that for content, I completely agree. I think that they, um, they're spending more than anybody else on content, and they're getting that pricing power because of it. And Scott Galloway thinks that they could be the next $300 billion company. I don't know, what do you think? Only three to four X from here. I would say anything is possible. It's a very scalable model, but boy, on the EBITDA side, do they have a lot of growing to do to justify that.